2022 is here with so many opportunities to make money in property, but where is the best in the UK to invest? That is exactly what I'm gonna be breaking down in today's video. A lot of this is going to be dictated by the strategy that you're actually deciding to go into. So I'm going to keep it to your boring <laughs> vanilla buy to let property investments, because ultimately, if you're buying a buy to let in the outskirts of Yorkshire and the Humber, maybe that's going to get a little bit less demand than the centre of Manchester. That's going to get a hell of a lot more demand than the middle of nowhere that's 30 miles away from your next neighbour. And of course, that changes completely if you're my videographer, Alex, where well, that's exactly where he'd want to buy. But let's assume you want to make money and you're not the anti-social, beautiful, humble individual that he is. There's a couple of ways of deciding this. And before I go anywhere, Further, today's sponsor is Lendlord, and I like using Lendlord for a central place where you can get all of this information and see the actual impact of this, which I'll be showing you a bit later. But for now, let's jump into the content. When I'm looking at this, there's two real things I'm looking about. First of all, the yield factor and, of course, the predicted capital growth. And there's a lot of information that this video is based around, but you can find this in Savills and a few other reports. And we'll put some links that you can actually read into this a bit later. One of the first things we're looking at is the north-south closure. If you don't know what this is, there's been a major closing towards the median price in the UK. So the average price we're looking at is around £270,000. And what's happening is you can invest fairly confidently below the median, below that average, knowing that the prices go towards that average. Down south, the prices are increasing a lot slower than the northern powerhouses. If you're investing down south, I'm sorry, but there are some really great ones down there as well, which I'll go through. But in general, the prices of the northern powerhouses are getting a lot closer to that southern divide. So when people five, 10 years ago, you'd go, oh, so cheap up north, you can buy a house for 20 grand. Not really anymore. The prices are a lot more substantial and London house prices in particular are slowing fairly dramatically. So first of all, we've got this sort of line across the central belt of England where we're really trying to understand how is it that this is going up and this is really, not really going down, but slowing down in that increase. And what can we do about it? Well, here's a few mentions that I actually quite like and my geography utterly useless. So if I point and you go, that's not where that is. I know, I'm probably wrong. Okay, so let's start down in Bristol. Here? Here. <laughs> we'll go with Bristol here. Bristol was actually needs a bit of a mention because rents alone in Bristol represent a rental increase and the volume represents about 96% of the growth in rental across the UK. So the flats are going absolutely crazy here and they're getting a huge uplift in the values. Another really good one for flats in particular is Birmingham, which is of course here on the map. So Birmingham's got uh, some really good increases in rentals of 30%, and that's contributing quite heavily to the growth factor. Then, of course, you've got Nottingham. I have no idea. I'm going to show Nottingham is here. I'm going to put an N on there. Again, I know how bad this is going to be. The reason I like Nottingham in particular is it's got some of the strongest, most consistent yields across England in particular, with yields of around 9% which is pretty staggering as a consistent yield, I think you would agree. And then of course, you've got your main powerhouses, which is, see if I get this right, Liverpool, Manchester, and Leeds, give or take, they're probably a bit more southern than that. But Leeds, Liverpool, and Manchester, they are the main powerhouses. Now, for me personally, I think the most scope is really between these three here, where they've got the perfect mixture of capital growth and rental demand. But let's talk a little bit more down south around this area, Lindon, also known as London, within the M25. This is statistically one of the worst areas. It's um, 
London was this big powerhouse with so much, but actually, consistently, the supply is above the demand anywhere in London right now. So whilst you can make a load of money um, there, because London's still London, if you're looking for a long-term rental, the predictions really aren't in London's favor for the next five years, especially in the next three years, where most of it is concentrated up here. What we're looking at as forecasts around the southwest, southeast, is around 13% growth over the next five years. And London in particular is getting between 5 and 6% growth. Whereas the north will shock you how good it is in comparison. So what is my personal choice and, in my opinion, the best place to be investing in 2022? So today's video sponsor is Lendlord. Lendlord is an incredible app and piece of software that you can both get on your phone and on your laptop or computer. And I use this for my entire portfolio analysis. It allows me to analyze properties properly, which you've probably seen in some of my videos, but also allows me to reliably predict the outcome of my long-term property investments. What I also like using it for is periodic reviews from my leveraging point of view my lending point of view, understanding when rents are due, insurances are due, and maybe when a refinance is coming out. Well, how I like thinking of it as is Experian as, as for your credit score, but for your property portfolio. So it's a great place for you to get an overview of it, see everything in one place so that you can correctly and predictably assess the current situation and future of your portfolio. If you're interested in this, they've got a free version available right now, and you can get access to this by clicking the link in the description. In my opinion, where you need to be is Leeds. Now, I know I am going to be biased because I happen to be up here, but there is a very good reason for this. So first of all, did you know that 73% of households in Leeds are renters? How crazy is that? 73% are renters, which is almost a complete reversal to the rest of the UK. What that means is there is way too much demand for property that just isn't there. What does that mean for uh, property prices and rents? They go up. Well, you've also got south of the river in Leeds, um, South Bank and places like that, Humslet, which used to be quite a rough area, is there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds that are going into development. They're actually developing 8,000 new homes down south of uh, the river, which is going to create around 35,000 new jobs in the area. And they're also building a real iconic building that's going to be 101 floors as a sky garden in Leeds, which is going to dominate the space, which again, over, which is due in 2024. And by that point, it is set to raise 28% in house price values. <sighs> In just two years, two and a half years, it's going to increase another 28%. All of these new jobs, all of these infrastructure means higher demand for properties, more jobs, increasing values in properties, and of course, the rentals coming in, creating all of these opportunities. So you might go, right, Leeds, 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 right? As a Leeds fan would say, but actually, what I'm looking for is all of the little places around it. I'm talking Wakefield, Normanton, Castleford, Pontefract, Halifax, some areas of Bradford. Okay, these areas are going to have the trickle down effect, kind of like in London, probably about 10 years ago. If you had London here, and you bought in Kent, Dartford, Crayford, Bexley, Bexley Heath, um, the southwest of it, up north, Luton, the north, the Edgware, all of those areas skyrocketed. Why? Because there was so much money getting pumped into it because everyone spoke about London, 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 London. What happened? London got priced out. What happens? People move out to the outskirts of the area. And what happens outside? it increases. We're already starting to see it in Leeds, and Leeds in particular is probably about five years behind where Manchester is. Manchester five years ago, cranes everywhere. Now, still a load of cranes, not so much. Drive around Leeds city centre, it's insane, like actually insane. You cannot go down a street in Leeds city centre without a crane down there. What's this going to do to the prices in Leeds city centre? 
it's going to price a lot of people out. There's going to be a huge uh, amount of demand there, and I want to be a part of that, but I'm going to focus all of my efforts over the next three to five years in West and South Yorkshire, in all of these pocket towns surrounding those areas, and I think the fruits of my labor and attention will pay off for me. But hey, that's just my opinion based on the data that I found. It doesn't mean I've seen everything out there, nor does it mean that I'm right. It's just my prediction. So if you're watching this and you've got your own opinion, let me know what you think below. What do you think of Yorkshire and the Humber? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Where are you going to be focusing your attention for the next three years? Make sure to click the link below and check out Lendlord if you haven't already. It is an absolute game changer. If you got value from this video, of course, hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, Channel and you want to find out more about property investment, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. So I'll see you in the next video.